Welcome to a world where nothing is as it seems. Welcome to fake Britain. Here at the Fake Britain House, we'll reveal the fakes that are flooding the market, conning people like you and me and making money for the criminals. We'll investigate the fraudsters who are selling us something that isn't real and could be dangerous, and we'll help you avoid falling for a fake. Today on Fake Britain, the fake and dangerous fuses sold on the high street. We've seen plugs actually explode. Uh, which can expose people to electric shock. The fake reviews that ruined one boy's Christmas. We waited and we waited and nothing came. To him, it was like end of the world. He was devastated about it. We're on the front line with a private detective taking down the fakers. Fake bags, jewellery. This is a shop that's openly selling fake goods. And document detectives, the Home Office unit uncovering fake IDs. It's like the forger's signature. It's an error that he's made in every single one of the fake documents. Fuses. They may not look like much, but these little things are actually one of the most important safety devices we have in our homes. If something goes wrong with an electrical product connected to the mains, the fuse will blow and the power is disconnected. So we should be protected from fire or electric shock. That all sounds very important, doesn't it? So what if the fuses in your home were fake? Your toaster, your kettle, your microwave, your charger. Every time you plug in an electrical item, the fuse inside is quietly working away, keeping you safe. In fact, we all use fuses several times each day, but many of us don't know much about them. No, not a clue. I have no idea about the safety aspects of uh, fuses. I just know that you put them in and plug. I think a 13A is for the iron, I think the 5 is for the kettle, and the pink is the universal one. I hope that's correct. None of the people we spoke to knew much about fuses, including the fact there's no such thing as a universal fuse. One person who does know all about fuses and their importance for safety when it comes to your home appliances is Martin Allen from Electrical Safety First. What a fuse actually is there to do is if there's a fault in that appliance, then it would make the situation safe so it would prevent a fire or a serious electrical shock. These small fuses are big business. The average household has over 40 electrical items, and a huge number of these are busman fuses made by technology company Eaton Electrical. Fakers are now making money from the enormous demand for these fuses. We've been raising awareness about fake electrical products for quite a, some time now, and what we've seen is both in unbranded and very cheap products that you find predominantly online, then often they come with fake fuses. But the fakes don't just come pre-installed in fake electrical items. They're also being sold to people who need to replace the fuse in a genuine appliance. Fake Britain received a tip-off that suspected fake fuses were being sold on the high street by budget chain Pound World. So we bought two mixed packs for just one pound. These fuses are supposedly a type made by the company Eaton Electrical. We showed them to brand protection manager Simon Bircham, who works to combat the problem of fakes. Eaton has been a leader in fuses for over 100 years. And like any other product that's of high um, esteem and regard, um, it, it's of a target for, for counterfeiters because they look for a product that's highly recognised. Eaton Electrical examined the fuses sold by Poundworld and confirmed they're definitely fake and quite possibly dangerous. If we think about the fuse industry, companies spend millions of pounds in research and development to produce safe products. And counterfeiters don't care about the quality of products. They don't care about the, the, the safety of products. To find out more about the fake fuses Pound World sold, we took them to Graham Mackay at the British Standards Institution, which sets the safety standards for electrical items. So in my left hand, I have a fake fuse. In my right hand, I have a genuine fuse. I've been in the industry for over 30 years. Um, I can't tell the difference between them. 
With the fakes so similar externally to the real thing, there's only one way to tell the difference. Graham will need to look inside. First, he cracks open a genuine one. This is a good fuse, just surrounded by sand. So the sand fulfills two functions. First of all, it insulates some of the temperature effects from the body of, of the fuse, and it also damps out any explosive force you might get in the event of a, a significant electrical fall. But what's inside the fake? We can see a counterfeit fuse has no sound present. A really important design difference. The fakers are cutting corners by not putting sand in fake fuses. And by doing this, they're putting users of electrical appliances in danger. In the event of a very large fault current, which you might have if you had a, I don't know, a short circuit on your washing machine, for example, the fuse will actually explode. The sand damps that out, typically, and prevents that explosion from creating havoc with the plug itself. None of the fakes we bought at Poundworld had any sand in them. Absence of sand, we've seen plugs actually explode, uh, which can, can expose people to electric shock. To find out just how dangerous these fake fuses might be, Graham's going to test one to the EU standard by passing a strong current through it for 30 minutes. What we're checking for really is the temperatures, the temperatures of the wiring, particularly the temperatures of the plug and the temperatures of the front of the socket. The temperatures are monitored with a thermal imaging camera. The wire inside the fake fuse should be able to withstand the current for 30 minutes without melting and breaking the circuit. But after just 15 minutes, it's game over. The fake fuse has failed. It should have lasted 30 minutes under that condition. You know, it's failed to do its job. The wire inside the fuse disconnected before it should. As well as leaving out the sand, the fakers are using inferior materials. This is an unreliable fuse that might break down before a fault even occurs or not break the circuit when it needs to. Graham also tested another fake fuse we bought from Pound World with more dramatic results. Here's one we tested earlier. In this case, the fuse carried on operating for 30 minutes and, and the plug got extremely hot, leading to some melting of the plastic here. You can see the, the burning that's taken place inside. That could lead to the plug coming apart, um, exposing you to electric shock. Looking at the socket, the pin of the socket has actually burned and charred here. Yeah, that could easily lead to a fire. Tests on other fake fuses have had more catastrophic results, like this explosion that was caused by a lack of sand in the fake fuse inside the plug. We showed footage to members of the public to see what they made of it. Oh my gosh, that's awful. It's literally like exploded off the wall. And that could happen like at any time, like... That's, that's really terrible, like, <laughs> it's really dangerous. I'm just shocked. It's actually quite horrendous and really quite scary. It will blow up, it will kill everybody in the house. I'm really disappointed that somebody would actually sell them in such mass production, considering that the damage it could do. As a result of fake Britain's investigation, Pound World was informed. They immediately issued a recall of the fake fuses. Pound World told us, we urge any customers who may have purchased these fuses to stop using them immediately and return them to their local store for a full refund or exchange. We're now conducting a full review to understand how these counterfeit fuses made it onto our shelves and to ensure that such items are not sold again. All busman fuses on sale in our stores now are genuine. We apologize sincerely for any inconvenience caused by this serious issue. They actually come in unique packaging, and it's very clear for the consumer that if you have a product that's in that pack, that you need to contact and take that product back to Pound World um, because that's fake product. Martin Allen from Electrical Safety First wants to emphasise that people shouldn't underestimate the potential dangers of using a fake fuse. In the UK, every year, we have about 7,000 fires that are caused from faulty electrical products. Some of those fires clearly will be associated with fake fuses that can lead to loss of life through either the fire or electrocution. So it's a really serious issue. Are you a savvy online shopper? 
Do you do your research on a business you might buy from, like checking up to see if they have positive reviews from satisfied customers? That sort of information is very reassuring. It makes it less likely you're going to have a problem, doesn't it? Well, you may have to think again. As Fake Britain has been discovering, it's not only fake products you have to be careful about, it's fake positive reviews on websites too. We spend more money online per head than any other developed country. More than three quarters of us shop over the internet, and last year we spent over £110 billion online. When buying a product or service, many of us turn to online reviews written by other customers who bought the same thing. Andy Ward from Nottinghamshire wanted to buy a video game with limited edition toy for his son for Christmas. He has a great passion for video games. Getting him off them is difficult. <laughs> Loves collecting figures and things that you get with them. And in fact, he probably enjoys that more than the games themselves, to be fair. The video game Andy's son had his heart set on had sold out in shops. So Andy went to online auction site eBay to see if he could get one. I started looking around for, I don't know, half an hour or so before deciding that the seller that um, I'd chosen seemed to be asking a fair price, it seemed legitimate, the feedback seemed genuine, and it seemed to tick all the boxes. Andy felt he could trust the seller because there were several positive reviews from previous buyers. The seller had only been a, a member of eBay for a few months but it accrued about 27 positive feedback, 100%, no worries. So Andy went ahead and bought the game for £149. He was pleased to have found the rare game that his son, who has autism, had set his heart on. They were both excited about the game's arrival. We waited and we waited and nothing came. The days went by. With Christmas approaching, Andy started to worry. He emailed the seller, but got no reply. He tried calling, but the phone number wouldn't connect, so he looked up the address the seller had given. I took minutes to establish that the door numbers on the road that the seller supposedly lived on never went to that number. The address didn't exist. On some websites, customers can see what products the person they are buying from has purchased. Andy decided to take a closer look at the customer feedback on the seller's profile. He was surprised by what he discovered. On closer examination of their feedback, I found that several of the feedbacks were what's basically purchased. They'd been bought from other eBay sellers. The video game seller's positive reviews were fake. He had, in fact, bought the reviews from this eBay seller. Fake Britain has since found that other online sellers are claiming to sell positive reviews. Andy had believed he was buying from a respected trader, but none of the reviews he'd believed were actually from satisfied customers. When people buy fake feedback, they can have written whatever they want. They can pretty much say, yeah, well, say I'm a fantastic seller, say everything arrives on time, couldn't be any better, very reliable. It was all lies, and the video game Andy ordered never arrived. He had to break the news to his son. Part of his condition would be that he does not really uh, understand that concept that, you know, sometimes these things happen, and. So to him, it was like the end of the world, you know, he, he, he wanted that and he was, he was devastated about it. eBay is not the only website that has problems with fake positive reviews. Fake reviews are appearing on all sorts of websites, tricking consumers into thinking they've been written by customers, when in fact they were written to order by someone paid to do it. Chris Emmins is the founder of Quick Checks, which works to verify online information. Every bit of research we've seen over the last few years and the investigations we've conducted ourselves show that online reviews are one of the ways you can most influence uh, consumers to buy products. A huge number of customers relying on online reviews to reassure themselves are being fooled. On a daily basis, we are contacted by consumers that say they only bought the supposed goods because of the reviews they saw online. I think it's fair to say 
that there must be literally millions of consumers falling prey to this sort of deception on a daily basis. Some fake reviews are used by real companies to make their genuine product or service appear more attractive. But fake reviews are also used by fraudsters to convince shoppers to buy products that don't even exist, which is what happened to Andy. With that degree of influence, it was obvious that fake businesses and fake online sites were going to use fake reviews to dupe consumers. But give your details to these fakers and you might lose more than you bargained for. Not only would they take your money in the first place, but they could start opening up uh, bank accounts, credit cards, etc., in your name, and really going to town on you. They could destroy your finances and they could destroy your credit reputation as well. At their worst, fake reviews can be used to make entirely fake websites. Selling fake services seem legitimate. Fake Britain wanted to find out just how easy it is to create one, selling not just non-existent video games, but a fake service. So we asked Chris to build one that could entice people to give over some of their most sensitive personal data. It took him just a few hours to create a fake glossy website from scratch, advertising a fictitious company that purports to help people with passport and visa issues. Here's one we made earlier. What you'll see on it is a very credible looking website. It purports to belong to various well-known trusted organisations. It says it's 100% guaranteed. But none of this is real. There is really no substance to this at all. Almost everything about it is fake. We have a fake about us page. It tells people that we have wonderful lawyers and we've been doing this sort of thing for years. And of course, to convince customers to go ahead and buy, the new website is full of positive reviews from thrilled customers. And there they are, all five-star glowing testimonials. They look credible, they're well phrased. So in 24 hours, you have a credible website capable of deceiving consumers. But it doesn't end there. Chris is now going to try to get his fake website onto a trusted review site, an independent forum allowing consumers to post reviews, both good and bad, of products and services they've used. Shoppers trust these sites because the reviews are impartial and haven't been posted or edited by the company, or so they think. One of the key problems of review sites is that there is a considerable lack of diligence in their processes. There is no real verification, not only of the reviewers, but quite astonishingly in many ways, of the business itself. We wanted to see how easy it would be to get the fake online business accepted by a trusted online review site. So Chris submitted it to a popular one called Review Centre. What we did here is put entirely fake details on it. So fake emails on the website, a fake telephone number, a fake address, and none of that was actually picked up in the, I hate to say it, so-called verification process. Chris received an email asking him to click a link, and that was all he needed to do to fool people with his fake service and the fake reviews praising it. His fake company now looks legitimate, featuring on a trusted review site, and Chris is able to start posting fake positive reviews on there too. How many stars, what sort of rating am I going to give it? I'm going to give it five. Would I recommend it to a friend? Unquestionably, I'd recommend it to a friend. Here's my review title, excellent. And now I've taken one of the fake reviews from the fake website. I'm just cutting and pasting that in there now. What it's asking me to do now is to confirm that I'm a genuine consumer. I'm going to agree with that. And there, lo and behold, is the first of what would be many, many fake reviews. None of the contact details on Chris's fake website are live, so no consumers contacting the service were fooled into thinking it was genuine. But if it's this easy to post fake reviews online, what can you do to be sure that the ones you're reading are genuine? If you see lots and lots of five-star glowing reviews, look and see how many of the reviewers maybe have only posted one review uh, because actually really dedicated reviewers tend to post quite a few. 
try cutting and pasting the review that you're seeing and see then if it pops up on other review sites. If you're seeing it on more than one review site, it's really likely to have been placed by a bogus company using fake reviews, trying to get as much exposure on the internet as possible. We contacted Review Centre and eBay with our findings. ReviewCentre.com told us, we work extremely hard to prevent fake reviews from going on our platform. We investigate every report we receive and have a system which identifies unusual review patterns. While this system has been shown not to be 100% foolproof by your program, we believe the vast majority of fake reviews are captured and the service can be used by consumers with confidence. We've also carefully complied with the laws in our sector and would welcome more details of your investigation with a view to tightening up our internal processes and procedures. eBay say their feedback system allows members to rate each other after a transaction and manipulating feedback is strictly forbidden. Any members who try to do so risk having their feedback removed and may also face restrictions of buying and selling privileges or suspension of their account. Andy did finally manage to get hold of another version of the video game for his son, who was very happy with his Christmas present. But Andy is still furious with the faker. It just made me feel really angry. It's the fact that you can have massive impact on family could be quite, uh, quite difficult to deal with. To him, it was very, very important. A recent government report named an area of Manchester as the counterfeit capital of the country. Millions of pounds worth of fake goods are sold there and distributed across the UK. Fake Britain's been given exclusive access to the private investigators and police units tasked with cracking down on the fakers. This is Manchester's city centre, where over £900 million a year is spent on clothes, handbags and other high-end products. But just north of the city centre lies Cheatham Hill, where the authorities suspect fake goods are being openly sold in huge volumes from high street stores. The authorities, however, are watching, and Fake Britain has been given exclusive access to private investigator Dave McKelvey and Greater Manchester Police on a major operation to disrupt the sellers of fake goods. Cheatham Hill is effectively the fake capital of the UK. Most of the fake goods that come into the UK come into this area and you can buy anything here, anything at all. Footwear, clothing, electrical goods, handbags, absolutely anything. It's like a, an open street market, extremely hostile to law enforcement. This is an absolutely vast area of criminality. Street after street, selling fake goods. The sellers of fake goods employ an army of lookouts, also known as spotters. Spotters there. You've got spotters out on the street. Um, you can see two there, two more there, three. Three on this corner. You see spotters in the doorways. Um, those spotters protect the premises so that if law enforcement um, come down here, the shutters go down immediately. If one premises gets raided, all the shutters go down, all the other premises close the whole area down. As I say, they're all, they're all working together. This is an organised crime syndicate. Private investigator Dave has been working with Greater Manchester Police for six months. And today, Fake Britain has been invited on their raid of the premises of a major counterfeiting gang. All the premises are all shut up, secured with uh, metal shutters. The shops are protected by steel shutters, but the officers have come prepared with heavy-duty circular saws. It's time to hit the shops. You got them, yeah? But then they find reinforced doors behind the steel shutters. So it's time for the police to unleash what they fondly refer to as the enforcer. Yeah, you're in. Right. And it's not long before they're in. This is exactly what we expected to find. Uh, you've got a premises here that is absolutely full of fake goods. 
as you look around the room, just fake bags, uh, fake Uggs, there's perfume, jewellery, absolutely everything here. This is a shop that's openly selling fake goods. There is a bewildering array of fake clothing and gadgets in the shop, and the fakers have an ingenious method of bringing their haul into the country without being detected. They're buying in bags that uh, don't have any labelling on. That way they can get them through customs without any problems. The tags that they put on, they generally get the, uh, the stuff shipped in untagged and then uh, the staff that they hire, they'll uh, tag it up in the shop. Sometimes they even use super glue. Just stamps in. Dave's got a shopping list of his own today, and this store isn't the only one he's planning to visit. Down the road, the circular saw is out again. I literally locked the whole place down the moment there's any police activity. We're now in, so we'll see what's inside this one. Police! The lights are off in this shop, but Sergeant Darren Thomason still spots a fake. Clearly, there's uh, a lot more stock in this shop. Um, you're into the sort of tens of thousands of pounds worth of gear. From usually your North Face jackets all the way down to your sort of jewellery as well. It's a big shop which will take officers a while to search. Oh my God. Darren's concerned about the safety of some of the fake products for sale in this shop, like these hair straighteners. You can tell the quality of these items are uh, that they're, they're not the real thing, they're, they're fake, and as you can clearly see there, it's got the, uh, the approval stamping on there, but again, that's going to be fake. There's no way on this earth that that's the, the real McCoy. That, you know, these things can catch fire so quickly because they're not past the safety regulations. So, yeah, they can certainly cause fires within the home. It's not just fakes that Darren's found. He's uncovered hard evidence of just how lucrative the fakery business is. This is the ledger you see. Cash takings here for uh, £7,000, £9,000, uh, just under £4,000, £10,424. This is all cash in hand. So a hell of a lot of money going through the door on a daily basis. While the officers continue their search, Dave decides to take a drive around the local area. He's surprised to see that for some of the shops, it's business as usual. Well, you've got huge police presence across the road, you've got a shop being searched, and there's people down that road still openly selling fake goods. I'll just reverse back again. Literally 100 yards from where there's a police raid going on. It's completely lawless. It's like the Wild West. Police and trading standards have been seizing about a million pounds worth of fake stock every year from Cheatham Hill. Today's haul might push that figure even higher. Push this card up on this one. This box up yeah, there. Yeah, it's a box up there, isn't it? The shops are literally packed to the rafters with fake merchandise. Oh, oh good catch. The ceiling space is crammed full of Lacoste trainers. Well, in this case, of course, low-cost fakes. Janet Shaw, head of Manchester's Trading Standards, is delighted with today's haul of fakes. Well, it's all been seized as evidence, and obviously we'll be trying to get uh, prosecutions from this, and obviously once the cases are over with it, we'll all be destroyed. We, we suspect it's organised crime groups that are involved in this, so the, the money could be being transferred out of the country to fund all sorts of activities. There's a huge container that's been loaded as we speak, so, uh, yeah, massive amount of stuff. This operation is the culmination of months of hard work and it's been a resounding success. So this is not small business. It's seven days a week, five to ten thousand pounds a day. This is vast, vast business. This is organised crime. So it's uh, a huge haul worth millions and millions of pounds. On this operation alone, trading standards and the police seized around two million pounds worth of fake goods. Well, as you can see, uh, the vehicle uh, was still in the process of loading up from the various shops we've seized from. So uh, we anticipate that this vehicle will be pretty full by the end of today, and we've got another vehicle on standby as well to come down. This is one of the most important documents we will ever have. Our passport proves who we are and helps us travel 
open a bank account, take out a mortgage, hire a car. The list is almost endless, but because it's so important, it's also very valuable. To the fakers, it's worth thousands. There's a specialist unit in the Home Office that investigates all types of identity document fraud. Their experts can prove whether this is real or a fake, and we've been given special access to their work. Fake ID documents are used by criminals for everything, from entering the country illegally to working illegally. And fake ID documents are on the rise. Home Office enforcement teams arrest around 10,000 people every year, attempting to use fake documents at the border. Here at the National Document Fraud Unit, officers are on the front line of detecting fake documents. Henry Barra is one of the chief immigration officers, and he thinks the quality of fake documentation is getting better. Some of the most impressive and most convincing forgeries, for instance, are now being found in some of the latest, highest security uh, passports. Here in the NDFU's archive, there are nearly 100,000 legitimate ID documents. Sometimes the best way to spot a fake document is by looking at the real thing. We've spent the uh, best part of 40 years building up this archive. We think it's pretty unique. We have passports, identity cards, driving licences from virtually every country in the world. For instance here, Sierra Leonean passports, Kazakhstan, Greece, Somalia, Soviet Union, the United States. We use these as comparison documents, so if uh, documents are referred to us for an opinion as to their authenticity, uh, we will hopefully um, have, a, have a document of that same series. Henry was at the centre of a major NDFU operation to bring a gang of document fakers to justice. Operation Clawfoot targeted fraudsters who were selling fake passports to foreign students who were then using them in support of their applications to work in the UK. One of the documents submitted was found to be a counterfeit a second document was subsequently submitted and officers noticed a similarity between the two. They put out instructions to UK visas and immigration to say, there seems to be a trend here, start looking out for these documents. And they started coming in in serious numbers. Officers finally traced the suspected fake passports to one address and raided the property. They were surprised by what they found. Paper was found there that's often used uh, to make counterfeit uh, documents, strongly suggesting that we discovered what was essentially um, the forgery factory. But it wasn't just fake passports that were on offer. For the right price, anyone could buy an entire fake identity kit. They came as part of a package uh, of a passport, Dutch passport, uh, Dutch identity card, uh, Dutch driving licence and various other papers. The Prices that were being charged varied between £7,500 and £18,000, and that shows just how lucrative this operation could be. David Roberts is one of the NDFU's specialist document examiners. There seemed to be very little external difference between the fake passports that had been seized and the real thing. But Dave is trained to spot the subtle differences that might give fake passports away. This is an example of one of the fake Netherlands passports. On initial glance, they, they don't look too bad, but the closer you look, pages are slightly misaligned to the cover. If I hold it up to the light, I can see that there is no watermark present on this page. In genuine passports, you expect gold leaf that's stamped into the cover, whereas this one is much more flat, uh, it's not very metallic. David was suspicious of the passports, but there was only one way to be sure by comparing them under a microscope to genuine passports from the NDFU's archive. This is what a genuine Dutch passport is expected to look like. We're on 46 times magnification now. You can see that it's solid colour printing. The S is still well defined. Whereas when we stick our fake documents under, the S is much less defined. When they're lined up side by side, you can see the difference. The team also discovered that the passport fakers had made some tiny but crucial errors with their reproductions. One anomaly that we identified 
in every one of the fake passports. On the bio page, on the information page, uh, two letters incorrectly touched in a genuine document. We expect there to be a nice gap for the text to be well registered. It's like the forger's signature. It's an error that he's made in every single uh, one of the fake documents. We came across two documents at uh, the organised crime group's business address and they also had this anomaly, which is how we were able to identify uh, that that is the source of the documents. The expert evidence provided by the NDFU was enough to get the passport gang convicted. The ringleader was sentenced to five years for conspiracy to assist uh, unlawful immigration, and their customers, uh, up to about 40, uh, have mostly been removed from the United Kingdom. Most of us will need a torch at some time. And if we bought one of these, we'd have no problem seeing in the dark. You see, this is a high-quality, high-powered LED torch with a bright white beam and long-lasting battery. It's often used by professionals who might have to depend on it, like the police or mountain rescue teams. If you got stuck up a mountain at night with only this for company, though, you might have a few problems. As you might have guessed, we're here in the fake Britain house. And this is a fake. This is an LED or light emitting diode torch. The LED bulb is longer lasting, brighter and more efficient than torches with older style incandescent bulbs and it's becoming increasingly popular. Lead Lenser is one of the leading brands of LED torch with patented reflector systems to make them even brighter. Tony Cutting from rural Rutland needed a powerful torch to help him and his wife get around their property at night. My wife has, is partially sighted. She has a brain tumour and uh, she has very limited vision. And, uh, you know, it's very important for her to see where she's going. So it's quite a long walk across the garden and it's, there's no lighting there whatsoever. So I do need a torch. Tony settled on a lead lenser torch. The one he wanted retails for up to £120. But Tony went online and found one on special offer for around 15% less, which he went ahead and ordered. I unpacked it on Christmas Day and I was just impressed by the quality of it. There, there was nothing about it that said fake. It looked really high quality, incredibly small, neat, and superb piece of engineering. Tony plugged in the torch to charge it up. The flashing light was on and I thought, right, well, it was just showing it's charging. But when I looked more carefully at the instructions, the flashing light said there's, a, there's some kind of fault with the charging system. Tony contacted the seller, who offered to send a replacement charger. But by now, Tony was suspicious and decided to make inquiries. I contacted the manufacturer with the serial number, and they wrote back and said, um, we don't recognise the serial number. We think it is a fake. Tony had bought a fake LED torch, and it was so bad, it didn't even switch on. I felt a bit foolish. I felt I should have been much more diligent in sorting out the doubt. I shouldn't have been trying to chase a 10, 15% discount by buying off some seller off eBay. I felt I, I was just an idiot. Tony is one of many who has bought a fake LED torch. His was for personal use, but LED torches appeal to a wide audience and many professionals rely on them to get their jobs done safely. Paul Green runs a security company supplying guards and guard dogs to warehouses and building sites. Most of our work is looking after construction sites, warehouses. We work dusk till dawn. You can meet quite a lot of unsavoury characters through the course of an evening patrol. We use good quality torches that we know are going to last, that we know are going to be bright. It's a critical piece of equipment. We can't afford for them to go wrong. Paul decided to replace his old torches with new lead lenser torches. They seemed fine at first, but it was only when his team tried to use them on a job in the dead of night that they realised something was wrong. When you press the on button, it didn't always respond. And sometimes you'd have to press the button two or three times to get it to respond. Paul was furious that his team had been put in danger by what he'd thought was a lead lenser torch. We use the torches for mission critical stuff. It's not like they're there to go in a kid's play toy. Um, so, yeah, we weren't best pleased. Got to be honest, I was a little bit miffed at LED Lenser initially, thinking they're not what everybody hypes them up to be. 
We look after some construction sites at the moment which have got deep excavations going on. If our guard is on a patrol in a safe area and his torch fails, it wouldn't be difficult for him to walk into a dangerous zone on the site. Paul immediately contacted Leadco, the supplier of the genuine lead lenser. They came back to me within a couple of days and verified the serial numbers on the torches that I'd received were fakes. Paul's staff could have been put in danger by their fake, faulty LED torches. But the danger isn't just hypothetical. We spoke to John Kemp, the managing director of Leadco. We supply the police, we supply mountain rescue teams, electrical wholesalers, plumbers, fishermen, outdoor sports enthusiasts. It's vitally important that when they're going out to find someone in the middle of the night, whether it's like Ben Nevis, Snowdon, in the depths of Scotland somewhere, that they have reliable equipment. Um, the last thing they want is to be halfway through a search and their light goes down. John knows of one fake that failed in a critical situation. It couldn't have happened at a worse time. The customer was a, a sea angler and very keen. Uh, he unfortunately purchased the fake. He was out on the, over rock pools fishing for bass one night and uh, yeah, the torch let him down and uh, he had to get back to the beach uh, with no light. And it's, you know, it's windy, rainy and uh, completely black. It was a very bad situation. The company regularly comes across fake versions of their product. They look good at first sight, but there are some crucial differences between the fakes and the real thing. For a start, the quality of the light. These are two LED Lenser P7.2 torches. One is fake, one is real. This one we purchased two weeks ago from a third party website. You can very quickly tell when you uh, actually show the product side by side. Yeah, the one on the left is the correct spot and uh, the one on the right has a square sort of beam to it. And you can also see that when we go to this flood, the genuine product is significantly brighter. The genuine product is well made. The same can't be said of the fake. Inside the product, they look very similar. Our product unscrews smoothly. This, you can tell, is very difficult. It just grinds and it's just not precision engineered. And inside, the lack of attention to detail continues. We use 24 karat gold contacts, and uh, this is more of a brass effect. Um, we don't know what it's made of. Otherwise, uh, they look very similar, but uh, certainly not of the same quality. Knowing his job as well as he does, security boss Paul Green feels he and his team have got off lightly. One particular site that I was involved with a few years ago, we had a minibus load of thieves turn up on site and they were intent on taking all the copper that was left on this site, which was nearly demolished anyway. When we're faced with a situation like that, it's important that all the equipment works. You're often away from a police response, you're not going to get an immediate assist. A lot of the time, all we have is our dog, our mobile phone and our lights. That's all from Fake Britain. Goodbye.